Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF microwave update series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Heim. In this episode, we're going to cover our November 5G and IoT-themed issue. And this issue has a special focus section on IoT that's carved out as an ebook, so you can download that separately. And the cover features a good one. It's MEMS Inside CMOS Technology Makes RF MEMS a Reality for RF Front Ends by Nuisance in the UK. And this company has done something very interesting. They've added a MEMS process to the back end of standard CMOS process so they can realize integrated circuits with both technologies. And in the article, they discuss their MEMS switch technology and the performance of a digital tunable capacitor building block that they developed. So good one to check out. Eric, what do we have for other technical articles? Thanks, Pat. Uh, we've got a good article from Infineon on their RF GAN on silicon activities. And the article gets into the features that make GAN attractive and the applications that benefit from the technology. Uh, it shows some GAN on silicon carbide performance for comparison. And then it gets heavily into GAN on silicon performance and reliability results that they've gotten from uh, both transistors and Doherty PAs. So uh, please take a look at that. It's impressive. We also have an application note from Irang Tech and a Korean university that describes a method for providing multi-user access from a single 8.5 gigahertz VNA. So the note gets into the theory behind what they've done, block diagrams and pictures of their setup, uh, and lots of results to verify the idea. And finally, we have a perspective from Skylo Technologies about the direct-to-device opportunity of mobile phones connecting directly to satellites. And Skylo is front and center in that area. And one of the co-founders gives readers a great view of the need, the challenges and solutions, and how they're commercializing that technology. And that's a really good look into an application that's gaining a lot of traction. Yeah, NTN networks are a big thing now. And so for products, we had two tech briefs. The first was a trihedral corner reflectors that enhance testing, and that's from Pasternak. And we also had vector signal generators to 40 gigahertz from Anapico. And we also had a special guest join us today, Jigger Shaw, Director of Business Development, Sales and Marketing at Quantic Microwave Dynamics, joined me to discuss his frequency control and timing developments that the company has done over the past few years. So let's take a look at a clip from that now. And as you said, Quantic Microwave Dynamics is well known for pushing the envelope and developing solutions that improve frequency stability, phase noise, and Q factor in RF systems. Any new or recent technology advancements that you can tell us about? Advances in PLL integrated DROs. Integrated PLLs slash DROs provide high frequency control and synchronization. Combine the low no noise of high quality references at low offsets with DRO's low phase noise at higher offsets. Ideal for applications requiring high frequency accuracy and stability. Reflects quantic microdynamics focus on high performance, mission critical solutions. It was very interesting to learn more about quantic microwave dynamics as I wasn't quite familiar with all the details of what they've done. So you can get the complete interview online at videos.microwavejournal.com. And turning to the news, we talked about a world record transmission rate and bandwidth last time in the news. And now T-Noble announced that it broke another world record with its 5G standalone network. And they're leveraging an emerging feature called New Radio Dual Connectivity, or 5G DC, which I hadn't heard of. With the 5G DC, the uncarrier was able to massively increase uplink throughput and capacity, and they were able to reach peak speeds of 2.2 gigabits per second and demonstrates the technology's potential to create serious efficiencies on how data is transferred from devices to the network. The 5G DC enables the uncarrier to aggregate 2.5 gigahertz and the millimeter wave spectrum, and this allows for a boost to the uplink throughput and capacity. And in the test, T-Mobile is able to allocate 60% of the millimeter wave radio resources for the uplink, when previous cases were only allowing 20%. And big acquisition news, Siemens announced that they're buying Altair Engineering for $10.6 billion, strengthening their position in the growing market for industrial software. Siemens had already acquired Mentor back in the 2016-2017 timeframe for $4.5 billion, so they've really been making a statement in this area. And so there's been a ton of software simulation consolidation this year. And so to review some of the RF side, 
CST was acquired by Dassault Systems back in 2016, and oddly enough, Renaissance, a semiconductor company, acquired Altium this year for $5.9 billion. Cadence acquired AWI software from NI in the 2019-2020 timeframe and beta simulation for $1.2 billion earlier this year. Keysight acquired eggplant automation software in 2020, but really nothing in the RF space. And if by far the biggest deal this year, which happened, was Synopsys acquired Ansys for $35 billion. So a lot going on this year in the software consolidation area. Eric, what did you see in the news? Well, in light of all the performance-related announcements that we're getting, it's not surprising that packaging is becoming more important to the industry. Uh, ID TechX released a report on advanced semiconductor packaging, and uh, if the report is as long and thorough as the press release, it'll be worth a read. And the report explores the latest innovations in semiconductor packaging technology. Uh, it covers key technical trends, uh, analyzes the value chain, and evaluates major players uh, and provides detailed market forecasts. And uh, the press release doesn't get into forecasts, but it does give some information about the trends and players. So that looks interesting. And amplifying on the directed device perspective that I mentioned earlier, Apple is committing over a billion dollars more to its existing satellite provider, Global Star, in order to have it expand its ground network and add more satellites for iPhone messaging. And it's been two years now since they launched the emergency SOS via satellite with the iPhone 14. And in that time, Apple is now expanding features and infrastructure. And this announcement reflects that. And in addition to funding a new satellite constellation with this funding, Apple has now taken a 20% stake in Global Star. And turning to events, we have our new Technologies Driving Military Radar online panel that has Case by Honeywell, Mercury Systems, Rodian Schwartz, Altair, and Fortify as panelists. So it's a great mix of companies, you know, covering all aspects of the subject. By the time you watch this, you'll probably have to catch it on demand. It's in our events section on the Microwave Journal website. And also, I covered that the Brooklyn 6G Summit in our last episode, but I wanted to point out that we recorded some very interesting demos, and those are all published on our video platform at videos.microwavejournal.com, and you can find a uh, section there for the 6G Summit, so check those out when you get a chance. Eric, how about you for events? Well, our next webinar will be on November the 19th, and it's entitled Reflections on Return Loss, What It Is, Why It's Important, an impact on high-density, high-performance switch matrix designs, and it'll be given to us by Menlo Micro, so please sign up for that in our events section. And uh, please note that we're starting a new newsletter in 2025 on space and satellite technology, so you can sign up for that on our website in the subscription area. And that wraps up this episode. Our sponsors are RFMW and Quantic Microwave Dynamics. RFMW is a technical distributor of RF and microwave products, and now power management. When you start your next design, consider their multiple product lines. Quantic Microwave Dynamics designs and manufactures free-running and phase-lock oscillators, amplifiers, frequency converters, and frequency multipliers with a focus on high performance and reliability. And they're now part of the Quantic Electronics family. And remember, as a member of the industry, a subscription to Microwave Journal is free, so please visit our site and subscribe today if you're not already a reader. Thank you for watching this episode, and please join us next time for another Frequency Matters.